Welcome to Coffee Break, the live stream series brought to you by Microchip Technology, where our mission is to educate, entertain, and empower you to innovate in your designs. I'm your host, Dana Curtis, and you are watching season 14 of Coffee Break. As always, we're here to dive into the fascinating world of embedded control technologies, integrated circuits, and all things smart, connected, and secure, and about the time it takes to enjoy a fresh cup of coffee. For those of you joining us for the first time, Coffee Break is live and we encourage audience participation. But before I introduce our special guests, let's take it over to Aliyah Fahut for some housekeeping items. Aliyah, what do you got for us? Thanks, Dana, and hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. We are currently live on YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn, and we invite you to participate in today's episode by leaving your questions and comments in the chat, or you can email us at livestream at microchip.com after this broadcast. If you're with us on YouTube today, make sure to subscribe to our channel and click the bell so you know when we're live and when our next episode is. If you're with us on LinkedIn, make sure to subscribe to the event so you can get all the information related to this episode. Back to you, Dana. Thanks, Aaliyah. Today we have a very special guest joining us. Roger Ritchie is Vice President of Development Tools and Academic Programs at Microchip Technology. Welcome, Roger. Thanks, Dana. Thank you for joining us. Um, so we're here to talk today about Microchip's academic program. So we've got our coffee ready. Let's start with the obvious question. Why have an academic program here at Microchip? So we reviewed last couple years of uh, um, uh, open a number of recs for new college grads, reviewed how many people were applying for those. And we've seen a decline in the number of people, uh, students uh, re applying for new college grad positions. And, you know, started to look into why that is. Why do we see this decline? And a lot of the data um, suggests, um, for instance, 20% uh, of students graduating from high school are actually prepared to enter a STEM degree, right? Wow. So, and that's math and science. A low number. Yep. And then once you get into uh, a university, 40% of those students that have STEM careers or STEM majors end up switching careers or dropping out. When you consider that the industry is growing the number of STEM jobs by 30%, yeah. I mean, you, you start to see, you know, the pipeline is just not being filled. Yeah, with two and five dropping out. So it's not just our problem. <clears throat> no, this is a, an industry problem. Uh, again, with STEM careers, right, which is engineering, uh, computer science, um, you know, these majors, they're, they're being starved uh, for students and you know, trying to get past uh, like a math degree. ASU did a study and said that if a student could get a B in calculus, that they would be successful in an engineering career. And if they couldn't, you know, they would drop out. And so ASU put a, a focus on math and math training and tutoring and right. focusing on math in high schools. And what they saw, I think it was something like 80% uh, success rate of students entering into an engineering degree you know, and then and then getting the final degree itself. Right. So, um, you know, Microchip is, you know, taking this opportunity to invest in academics and, uh, you know, commitment there to foster the development of future engineers. Uh, you know, we have a unique program with resources and benefits um, that help educators and, and students alike. Uh, we have an academic program, which uh, an educator or a student can apply for at, uh, microchip.com slash academic. Mm -hmm. um, it gives uh, educators and students access to a wealth of resources. So this is curriculum, labs, technical training, um, and you know, it's, it's really tailored to help them be successful, right, in, in pursuing an uh, academic career. Um, we also offer all sorts of um, evaluation boards uh, that can be used in classes, uh, we offer academic discount, you know, to, to educators as well. Um, the, uh, we have free uh, access to our software tools, so MPLAB integrated development environment, um, extensions for VS Code. VS Code is a very popular tool today. Mm, yep. uh, I think the statistics show that half of the people on earth have used VS Code. Ooh, that's so a good stat. Yep. Um, and we also uh, support, you know, local universities. Uh, we have a number of probably 2,000 sales and application engineers in the field that are there to help local universities with, uh, you know, guest lectures or uh, doing technical training, you know, locally and in the local language. So this is a global program. 
So we're talking way more than just discounts on hardware and software then, right? Oh, absolutely. So, uh, you know, I'd like to show our book. Yeah, what have we got here? So this is our first book on practical embedded computing. It's based on 32-bit ARM devices. Mm -hmm. um, it not only covers the ARM core itself, but it also covers all of the interfaces that the microcontroller has to the real world. Because at the end of the day, the microcontroller is interacting with you know, the real world. So things like an A to D converter, a UART, uh, a touch sensor interface, or a PWM. Uh, and then to go along with the, board, uh, the book, we also have uh, a development board and each of the chapters covers, you know, a different circuit on here. And again, the great thing about this is um, students are, you know, using, you know, real world hardware. Right. So this is our first book. Um, we're going to dry run this at our partner university here locally um, next semester. And then the book will come out in March. And we expect classes to be launched in uh, the fall of 2025. And then we're also working on a second uh, a book which will be on FPGAs. Okay. And this uses a new uh, FPGA discovery board. Uh, it just won Best Embedded Tool of the Year from Electronic Industry Awards. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, so we also have a partnership with DigiKey to go off and develop the ebook for this. So we're very excited. That should probably uh, come out towards the, the summer, uh, this next summer in 2025 with uh, classes starting in the fall of 2025. Now, FPGA is a bit of an advanced application. Is this, uh, is this one of our higher end boards or, or does this compare? Um, so this is actually a very affordable board. Yeah. Normally FPGA boards go for three to $5,000. Yeah, I was thinking four digits. So this is a hundred dollar board. Wow. So it's very economical to you know, get labs started up and yeah. for students to use it. It gives you the fundamentals of FPGA technology but it also allows you to get into those advanced applications uh, like AIML for machine learning uh, or um, you know, edge sort of applications. Mm -hmm. um, and so the book will cover you know, all of those uh, uh, topics. Okay, so the book's impressive and the boards are extraordinary, uh, but is there more beyond that? Yeah, so Microchip wanted to focus on how do we get you know, very um, focused uh, 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 training for uh, students, and um, so we have uh, developed a workshop series. Okay. So it's again, it gives you access to real world hardware. Um, it comes, it's three hours long. It's, uh, uh, it will be uh, uh, basics of programming, introduction to electronics, right? It's really good for high school in your first and second year of, of college. Um, it's uh, you walk away with the board, so the student can take this and do you know work with it after the the seminar itself. Um, it connects with uh, uh, industry standard, so there's a quick connector or a Stemma connector from Adafruit and SparkFun, so you can okay. plug in additional boards into the system right. and and try out new functionality. Um, so it's a great way for uh, to get introduced to electronics, very basic electronics and an introduction to doing programming. So but you, you actually get to work with something, right? We're not talking academic theory and lectures, like you're putting your hands on the board. No, right? hands on, right? So, you know, and you'll be using tools, you know, in these workshop series, uh, which are the same that 120,000 microchip clients use to develop real world applications and solve real world challenges, uh, uh, problems. Yeah, that's good. It helps prepare them for later on after university, right? Absolutely. Okay, so at this point, Let's get over to Aaliyah to see what kinds of questions we're getting from the interwebs. Aaliyah, what do we got? Perfect. Uh, let's start with the first question. This is um, coming from YouTube. Why is a microchip placing such an emphasis on academia these days? We look back to the statistics, right? We're not creating a pipeline uh, of engineers, not just for a microchip, but for the industry in general, right? I think uh, one of the st statistics said that there's 3.4 million new STEM-related jobs over the last 10 years. You know, when we're not creating that talent to pipeline, um, it has to be industry and academics working together to solve this because academics can't do it itself, right? And what can we do to inspire kids, right? Get them excited about engineering. Yeah. Have them understand what engineering is. I mean, you know, most uh, uh, you know, parents don't know what engineering is. 
Especially if 40% of them are changing their major, right? Exactly. So getting them past the math and the science and looking at what they get to do with engineering. Typically, you're only doing one or two classes a year in engineering. So as a first or second year college student, you don't really see the programming and kind of the hands-on, you know, um, uh, uh, experience using an eval board, right? And I think that's what gets, you know, me excited in the morning is to come in and be able to use real world hardware. And so, you know, we ran a couple of these workshops here locally and uh, the feedback was, you know, this is exactly why I started engineering was to do these sorts of things. So I think it really gets kids excited. Yeah, and that's good for the future of the industry as well, right? Yep. So, and again, I think only through the partnership of industry and academics can we make this happen. Great, thank you. Here is a LinkedIn question. Um, are there any emerging technologies that engineering programs should be incorporating into their courses to help prepare students for the future? Yeah, there's two things. Uh, first one is AIML. I mean, machine learning is everywhere now. It allows you to um, come up with, uh, so when you're analyzing sensor data, right, you can more quickly analyze the data and you can more accurately come up with a decision to make on the data. Uh, so I think that, anything with AIML, and it's beyond just you know machine, uh, machine vision, right? The typical things you see is, um, you know, I've got a door lock and it looks at my face and says, yes, you know, that's Roger. Right. And lets me get in, right? Uh, things like we have applications for detecting, detecting a battery. So let's say I'm in a power tool and I don't want to allow a third party battery because they may charge or discharge it incorrectly and you know doing that with a lithium battery is a bad Possible thing. Possible threats of danger, yeah, no, yep. I understand that. So it allows you to, to detect that. Um, also, you can do things like uh, we have an application where uh, in a coffee machine, commercial coffee machine, uh, the board actually smells the coffee and says, is this my coffee or not? And so it's analyzing the sensor data and, and you know, based on the data, it says yes or no. Uh, so lots of really, you know, interesting applications. Uh, the second thing is, you know, the cloud, IoT. You right. hear these buzzwords, but everything's connected to the cloud today. Yep. Your thermostat, your security system, your car. So my truck sits outside my house it connects into my Wi-Fi router and gets updates mm -hmm. and things Over like that. Air, yeah. So everything is cloud connected. So understanding the technologies on how that happens, um, you know, everything kind of branded IoT, I think that's a, another important uh, technology for- so Probably security work. implications with that too, right? Oh, massive security, right? Today, I mean, every, you hear about cyber attacks yep. and, you know, stealing people's information and so, uh, Focusing on the security aspect of it is also a whole market in in and of itself. Uh, you know, we at Microchip have a lot of devices that, that are used in security applications, you know, and I'm just amazed at, you know, the things that we do to prevent our devices being hacked and to prevent our clients' yeah. applications to be hacked. Yeah. And so it's a constant evolving uh, uh, technology. It's not stagnant because, you know, hackers come up with new ways to get into the right. devices. And, and so we have to be, you know, one step ahead of that. So the more access you give, the more vulnerabilities there are, right? Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, our engineers have to be in the mindset of, you know, people trying to, you know, penetrate these devices. So um, I think there's a lot of brilliant minds, you know, and I think new generations of students coming through bring through, hey, new ideas on, you know, how do we protect, you know, applications. Right. Plenty, plenty of areas beyond what you would think of when you think of yes. standard applications, right? Yes. Great, thank you so much. Um, here is another LinkedIn question. What is it about Microchip as a company that makes it an ideal academic partner? So first thing is, you know, it's easy to work with Microchip, mm -hmm. right? We have our academic website, we have the book and the boards, um, we have local uh, support all over the world, you know, an application engineer can drop in and, you know, help an institute. Um, uh, you're using tools that are used by 120,000 clients worldwide. So when our, uh, when students graduate from school and they have experience with Microchip, you know, it's, it's quite possible that the company that they're going to work with is using Microchip. Mm -hmm. So it gives them an advantage, right, from a, from a student perspective, you know, you become more valuable 
but also, you know, with us partnering with academics, we're making it easy for educators to get access to materials that help train this new wave of students. For real world knowledge, right? For real world applications, right? I'm not just blinking an LED, right? I'm, you know, creating, you know, a thermostat that's connected to the internet. I'm, uh, I'm aware of how to do AI ML. Um, so, yes. Bluetooth, so on and so forth, yeah. Bluetooth, wireless, I mean, it goes on and on. Yeah. Awesome, thank you. Here is another YouTube question for you from Jan Drexler. Hello, we already use Curiosity Nano Explorer boards in our education. How can we get access to the workshop series or will the book Practical Embedded Computing be available in PDF format? Good question. So uh, what we ask people to do is to register mm -hmm. to, for the academic program, again, through microchip.com slash academic. We'll put that link in the feed. Yep. And when you do so, you get access free of charge to all of the curriculum, the book, the labs. Um, so all of that's free of charge, both to educators as well as students. So we're not doing that. If you want a printed version, you know, of course, we'll, we'll make printed versions available. Mm -hmm. But everything is available online just by registering. And when you automatically reg when you register for the academic program, you automatically get academic discounts. Um, you know, and you get access to a wealth of support. Right? There's forums that are in there. There's training. Um, you, again, you get access to my team, which helps support you know academics uh, directly. Um, so it's it, it's a fantastic resource, but it all starts with getting registered. Right, so there's a join button on that academic page, right? There's a join button on the academic page. You go in, you fill out a form, and uh, then you get approved and included in the program. All right, well, those are all the questions I have for you today. <clears throat> Thank you, Roger, for answering our audience questions. And for the audience, if you have additional questions or comments, you can email us at livestreamonmicrochip.com after this episode. And don't forget to follow us on LinkedIn and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Back to you guys. Thanks, Aaliyah. That concludes our coffee break for today. Special thanks to Roger for sharing his knowledge and passion with us today. It's conversations like these that remind us of the endless possibilities empowering your innovation in the world of embedded control and processing. If today's topic has sparked your interest and you'd like to learn more, I encourage you to visit our website at microchip.com where you can dive deeper into the world of microchip technology. And if you'd like more coffee break, head over to microchip.com forward slash coffee break and click on the subscribe button to get updates for all things Coffee Break. You can also see upcoming episodes for season 14. And of course, be sure to join us next time on Coffee Break as we explore characterizing sick MOSFET switching losses with double pulse test. That episode will live stream on Wednesday, December 4th. Until then, stay curious, stay creative, stay caffeinated. Mike's unmuted. <laughs>